Welcome to Hoover's Maple Syrup. My name is Terry Hoover and along with my wife Diane and my brother Bob, we make certified organic maple syrup. We're also members of the Ontario Woodlot Association and the Ontario Maple Syrup Producers Association as well as we have an environmental farm plan. Here we are in the forest, the bush. In Canada, we call a woodlot a bush. And we have 50 acres with approximately 1,500 maple taps. And the leaves are all busy working right now, converting sunlight into sugar via photosynthesis. And then it is all stored in the roots. Here are the leaves turning beautiful red and orange colors and all the sugar is stored in the roots for the winter and the bush goes into a deep sleep. First, we, we have to break the snow off it. When the bush is asleep and resting, we're hard at work thinning the bush to improve it and also to get firewood for next year. All of our wood is four feet long and split and piled to dry for over a year so that we're insured dry wood for the fire. In the bush, the trees are all joined by lateral lines 
and the main lines run underground and into the sap shack. Uh, when we're tapping trees, first off we want to look for a maple tree. And there is two maples that have the highest sugar content. The hard maple, which is the main one, and black maple, which is grown out east around Ottawa area. The black maple is sweeter than the hard maple. We uh, have all kinds of tools for repairing and fixing the lateral lines. Uh, these tools are not mass produced, so therefore they're approximately 10 times more expensive than your regular pliers. Pick a suitable spot on the tree for the tap. You drill in a hole, a 5 16 hole, on a slight downward angle so the sap will run out of the tree. So once we have our hard maple picked out, we pick a suitable spot for tapping. We want to check last year's hole to make sure it's healed off to ensure that the tree is healthy. And if it hasn't healed off and means it's under stress, so we won't tap that tree. We'll give it a year's rest. But if it has healed off, well then we pick a suitable site at least six inches away from last year's tap hole. You can't tap the last year's tap hole and you don't want to tap near it because there will be scar tissue around and it doesn't produce as much sap. The other thing to realize is a tree produces approximately 250 gallons of sap a day and when we tap it we only take out one to two gallons a day so we're leaving lots for the tree to to use. Everything works right it just pops into that hole want to get it over that second bar. Inside the tree there's a tremendous amount of pressure built up and this little gauge tells us the pressure and under 10 pounds the sap doesn't run and over 12 to 14 pounds uh, we can start to collect and we've had it go as high as 26 pounds. collecting the roadsides and we have a wagon that we pull behind our truck and there's a vacuum pump on that wagon which sucks the sap in just like a big vacuum cleaner and we can suck 40 gallons of sap into that tank in under two minutes and we have 500 taps on the roadsides.
we don't use any chemicals of any kind so that means we don't use chemicals for washing the pans or cleaning the lines and we don't use anything chemical for a defoamer. We use certified organic vegetable oil and everything is natural and biodegradable in our operation. The underground extractor and the sap comes in there under vacuum. We run 20 inches of vacuum. Once it's full, a little switch flicks on a pump and the pump pumps it up into one of our, our six holding tanks. From there, all the sap is filtered and sent to a holding or a feed tank. The reverse osmosis machine takes out approximately 50% of the water. When the sap enters the machine, it's two to 4% sugar and when it leaves it's approximately 8 to 10 percent. We are changing the filters on the RO approximately 3,000 gallons of sap has gone through that filter. holes in the firebox and air is blown up through the fire thus producing a, a fire twice as hot as conventional. Here's a load of dried firewood that was cut the year before ready to be stoked into the fire. Uh, just to give you an idea all the wood is four feet long and we put one wheelbarrow load of wood into the fire every six minutes. So that there pallet load that you see on the tractor, that's gonna last us probably an hour and a half. Once it's in the evaporator, well, the way we know that it's maple syrup is by temperature and syrup boils at seven and a half degrees above the boiling point of water. And water around here boils at approximately 210. So we take our syrup off at approximately 217 and a half degrees. Once the temperature is correct, we drain it off into the finishing pan. And when the finishing pan is full, we will run it through a filter press, taking out all the impurities such as sugar sand and calcium, magnesium, etc. We have to grade the syrup. We produce four grades of syrup here. Uh, light, medium, amber, and dark syrup, or also known as cooking syrup. And once it's graded, it goes into a stainless steel drum for storage. Or, if we have time, we'll put it into our packager and package it into the retail size containers. The smallest one being 40 milliliters, the largest one being 11 liter plastic jug. We sell most of our product in glass and plastic 
a very small percentage goes out in tin. They just don't seem to be popular anymore. And we package everything hot at 180 degrees because that sterilizes the inside of the container as well as the air cavity at the top when we turn the jug upside down and, and thus keeping it for a lot longer.